Dear colleague, welcome. It's Dr. Jack with this week's video blog post, and our topic for today is your personal inventory. Now, one of the things as human beings we are really good at is if we are confronting an acute change, problem, or threat. We know what to do. We know how to protect ourselves. We're also good, not as good, but still pretty good in anticipating future problems and threats. We're able to, to use our foresight in order to plan for that potential problem or threat in order to protect ourselves and our families. But one thing we are not good at is at uh, changes that occur in our lives that could be deleterious changes that occur at very slow rates that, that are just imperceptibly increasing. It reminds me when I was going through my medical training, uh, seeing those images in, in medical textbooks like someone with a basal cell carcinoma and half their face is eaten off by the cancer or someone with a you know grapefruit-sized tumor on their neck. And I was thinking, wow, how do people let this uh, you know proceed for so long? And of course, the answer is that these images were often taken a long time ago, and these unfortunate individuals probably didn't have access to medical care. But I think there might be an, an additional potential issue is that even if I have like a grapefruit-sized tumor on my neck, tomorrow it's still going to be a grapefruit-sized tumor. It's not going to change from day to day or from week to week. And it's easy then not to react to it and not to do something about it. And I think many of us have such um, uh, deleterious effects that are going on in our lives, obviously not cancers or tumors in our necks, but something that's really not working well in our lives, but that has started perhaps months or years ago, and it's just imperceptibly increasing. And it's not been any worse uh, this week than it was last month, or it probably won't be any worse next month than this month. But, you know, year by year, it may be increasing by 20 or 50 percent. So let me give you three examples uh, that may be uh, good for you to consider as, as you're doing your personal inventory of, of issues that may need your attention. Let's start, start with something concrete like sleep. So if your sleep is in any way uh, kind of a problem for you, perhaps you have problems falling asleep or staying asleep, or maybe when you wake up, you're not really feeling very refreshed and you're sluggish throughout the day. So consider what are the possible contributors uh, to your sleep kind of haven't gotten to the point where it's really not as restful as it once was and as it perhaps may be again in the future. Is it that the room that you're sleeping in is too warm or is it too cold or is there too much ambient light? Are you exercising too late in the day? Or perhaps you're not exercising at all and your sedentary lifestyle actually interferes with getting a really good night's sleep. Perhaps you're eating too much at the end of the day. Perhaps you're engaging in, in kind of stressful or, or very engaging activities uh, right before bedtime and not giving yourself time to relax. I remember one patient was telling me about how he has trouble sleeping and, and during our conversation it became clear that he was doing his taxes right before bed while sitting up in bed. And I was like, well, you know, that's probably going to interfere with feeling rested, kind of rested and relaxed and, and ready, uh, ready to fall asleep. So consider what kind of uh, contributors may be interfering with you getting a good night's sleep. Now let's think about another example that is maybe a little bit broader. How about if you're finding that you really are kind of tired uh, you know, too many days out of the week or, or almost maybe every day. Now, perhaps it is the poor sleep, but maybe our, it's additional things that are going on in your life. Uh, maybe it's uh, that your diet is really not as, as healthy as it could be. Maybe you're consuming too many calories. Maybe you're consuming too many calories late in the day. One of my personal problems that I'm trying to deal with, part of my personal inventory is um, I'm, I don't overeat during the daytime hours, but when it gets to be 9 o'clock uh, my time, all of a sudden I'm having all of these sweet cravings, and it's like really hard for me to resist having a snack before I go to bed. Uh, and sometimes I resist and sometimes I give in to it, but I know it's something that I, that I need to address. 
uh, perhaps, uh, again, there's, there's something even bigger going on in your life, more broad and comprehensive. Maybe you're facing, you're realizing that you're living with chronic stress. Perhaps um, you, when you start thinking about it, you realize it's, it's somehow related to your job or to your kids or to your spouse. But really when you're doing a personal inventory, you have to get more granular than that. You can't just say, what's well, my job, my spouse, my kids. What is it about the job? A particular individual, particular patients? Uh, is it your uh, electronic medical records? What is it? Uh, what, ab what is it about your kids that's stressful? What is it about your interaction? What about with your spouse? What's going on there between you and, and him or her? And, you know, once, once you identify these issues that are contributing to your problem sleeping or your sluggishness or your chronic stress, don't feel the need to right away do something about them. Now, when we identify contributors, you know, eventually we do want to address them because otherwise nothing changes. But I think one of the things that, in a way, uh, prevents us from taking stock of what's going on in our lives is then kind of feeling overwhelmed by, well, what are we going to do to, to address these issues? Okay, Jack, so now I identify that I've got like A, B, C, and D going on at work that's stressing me out, but what am I supposed to do about it? And so I think that the first step is simply to do an inventory. You know, take a mental inventory, maybe even write it down, and then you could put it aside. You don't have to tackle everything today or tomorrow. Um, at some point, you're going to feel ready to address those issues, those contributors. And again, you don't have to do all of them at once. You know, um, it's important to just start down that path of addressing issues that will el eliminate or decrease those deleterious parts of your life and, and add to the healthy parts of your life. But that, that, you know, you can do that at your own pace. So this is the time of year, towards the end of the year, where many people are thinking about making resolutions. And I'll have several more uh, posts for you. Uh, to help you make your resolutions, if you're making any, to succeed, to stick. Because we all know that for many people, they don't stick. But I think a good starting point is really to take the personal inventory. Again, kind of put it aside, kind of like dough, you know, let it rise, let it rest. And then at some point, whether it's a day or a week or even a month from now, you may feel like, okay, now I'm ready to start taking action. So signing off, it's Dr. Jack. Thank you so much for your attention. All the best to you, and until next time, thanks very much. Bye-bye now.